Now, why did revolt of 1857 happen? There were numerous reasons which led to discontent among the people against British policies, and there were internal revolts. As we said, India was divided into independent states, and there were uprisings within the internal states. These were fueled by numerous reasons that we would understand in the while, but. Uh, the major areas where the revolt started was primarily the northern and the eastern parts of india so the regions of uh, uttar pradesh bengal bihar odisha were the major areas and some of the tribal groups were worsely affected by the british policies because most of the resources which were drained were drained from the forest areas and therefore the tribals started to revolt the most important tribals who revolted were the b the khols and the santhals so those were the important tribes that revolted against the britishers and finally this 1857 revolt is known as the first war of independence of india and it is also known as the spoy mutiny so spoy mutiny is the another name for the 1857 revolt now before we begin with what was the real uh, things that happened in the revolt let's understand the factors that led to the uprising of this revolt so we can broadly classify those under five headings those could be political factors economic factors socio religious factors military factors and immediate factors now the immediate factors were very very obvious what was the immediate factor the immediate factor was the greased cartridge now the greased cartridges were uh, greased by the fat of cow and pigs now uh, by a uh, mouth and this was against the religious sentiments of the people so this immediate cause was basically a reason which led to divide and rule policy of the britishers because they created a divide within the indian society based on religious grounds so that was one of the immediate cause that led to the discontent and the uprising of 1857 the next was the military causes now the military causes were very very simple the first thing were the people who were recruited for the military were given less salary they were not given promotions so there was no promotion the salary was less they could not rise above the post of subedar so subedar was the highest post they could hold they could not go beyond the post of subedar so there was a discontent amongst the military the soldiers were not happy with this policy also there was a new clause brought and this was the general service entitlement act now the general service entitlement act which was brought in the year 1856 just a year ahead of the revolt of 1857 said that any person who is recruited to be uh, to the army could be asked to go to the britain if required and this was an believed to be an attack on the sentiments of hindus because they were being forced to go to another country and probably the food or the the lifestyle was not uh, familiar to them so this act itself was a was a discontent among the people among the people who have been joining the military for all purpose and the people was also unhappy because there were no extra allowances which were given if they were asked for extra work there was no extra allowances or what is known as the bhatta which was not given and those were some of the reasons that made people unhappy when it came to the socio religious causes the socio religious causes were a little different like uh, britishers said that abolishment of female infanticide sati pratha should take place but a segment of the society believed that these things are actually part of our culture why they are taken away from us so there was a 
a disturbance in a segment of the society who were actually involved with those practices so the people who were actually involved with those practices were the people who started to revolt however this basis was not that deep rooted as the other different causes that we have discussed the next was uh, the development of the railways the development of the transport and there was always a fear or the insecurity in the minds of indians that they are trying to expand their roots deep into india and this could threaten the originality or the the independence of the nation so that was another important reason which affected it uh, imparting western education now when people were imparted western education there was a conflict between as we understood in the previous lecture that there was a conflict between orientalist and angelist so those who were orientalist believed that uh, western education being imparted to india would weaken the culturally strong country and that was another one of the causes that led to the uprising of 1857 and the last not the least was discriminating the people racially there was a huge hidden discrimination which was prevalent prevalent in the society because as we had said it was clearly mentioned in the macaulay's words when he talked about the three objectives of education he said that we want people to be indian by blood and color but to be british by their talent and by their intellect that clearly signifies that they were trying to separate out the people based on racial uh, aspects so those were some of the racial or the social religious causes hidden the next was the economic cause now economic cause was very very obvious the three systems of land revenue that we understood permanent settlement rothwari permanent settlement in the eastern part of india rothwari in the southern parts of india and mahalwari in the western northern parts of india were the means of collecting revenue if the revenue was not paid the land was confiscated so by all means there was an economic drain in the society the people were losing out their money the savings were going waste and this was another reason that there was an economic drain then lord dalhousie's policies of constant annexations so annexations and establishment of their supremacy was another cause of the revolt which led to the uh, the real reason for the idea of uprising of 1857 another important reason was those zamindars were loyal sometimes it so happened that zamindars were also in crisis because they had to pay their share to the britishers but the peasants were not able to pay them and this created um, discontent among segments of zamindars as well those zamindars who were not able to pay the revenue to the britishers were were discontented so that was another economic reason which affected it and the most important economic reason we have obviously understood and that was because of industrial revolution in the britain and flowing of cheap goods in india which led to a complete deterioration of the indian uh, textile industry indian craft industry and so on and so forth the next was political cause now under the political cause the expansion policies of lord dalhousie which we have understood in the separate lecture we see that the policy was annexation to expand annexation was the idea now annexation through what annexation uh, on various grounds it could be war or conquest for example in the south it was the anglo maratha war the anglo mysur war then there was annexation on the grounds of mis uh, governance or mal administration as in the case of avadh there was annexation on the grounds of doctrine of lapse where they said that uh, only natural hire would be given the right 
However, if the child is adopted, the child would not have the right. The same was in the case of Nana Sahib. Nana Sahib was the adopted son of Baji Rao II and Nana Sahib was in the region of Kanpur. Nana Sahib was not allowed pension. So there was discontent amongst uh, the segment of the society and that was one of the political reasons. The another important was uh, the Bahadur Shah Zafar was not given the title and had to squeeze himself within the boundaries. So uh, that was another uh, political pressure which surmounted the region. And the next important political cause was, although when they were going for treaty, as we have seen in the first anglo mysore War Treaty, the Peace Treaty said that we would unite in case of third power, but that did not happen and as a consequence, Second anglo mysore War was fought by Hyder Ali. Because when Marathas attacked uh, Mysore, British did not interfere. So they always twisted from what they stood for. They never abide themselves to the treaties which were laid down. So either they twisted from the treaties or they broke the treaties. They were not on their words. And this was another reason that led to the uprisings for 1857. Now understanding all these uprisings, there was a constant mutiny that started and the revolt actually got deep rooted. Now, how did the revolt got deep rooted? It was Mangal Pandey, the real hero. Mangal Pandey was a spoy at ba ba Barakpur and he was asked to load the cartridge, the new rifles, the Enfield rifle with the greased cartridge. When Mangal Pandey refused and he in the process uh, killed two of the Britishers, he was hanged. The news of this rang like, uh, spread like a fire and it was on 10th May 1857 that the revolt broke out. The people started to march from the region of Meerut till Delhi. And in Delhi, who was the ruler? At that time, Bahadur Shah Zafar was in rule. Now, when Bahadur Shah Zafar was the empire, uh, the people who marched from the regions of Meerut to Delhi believed that by all means, they had to uh, move against the policies which have been laid down by the Britishers. And this revolt actually started why? This revolt started as a result of the causes that we had discussed so far. The five basic categories under which we discussed the cause. It was not just one thing that led to a fire, but the numerous reasons together which led to this fire. And finally, the spread of the revolt. Now, where did the revolt spread? The revolt spread mainly to the regions of Central India, the regions of Rajputana, and the parts of Western Bihar. The major centers of the revolt are again important. So the major centers are Delhi. In Delhi, it was Bahadur Shah Zafar. In Kanpur, it was Nana Sahib, the adopted son of Baji Rao II. Then we had the region of Lucknow or Awadh as it was called at. And Awadh was under Begum Hazrat Mahal. So Awadh was another important center. Then in Jhansi, it was Rani Lakshmi Bai who was uh, held by Tatiya Tope and she was able to conquer the regions of Gwalior but ultimately she lost her life and that was the region of Jhansi. So region of Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Jhansi and then we had the regions of Ara in Bihar and Bareilly. So these were some of the major centers where the revolt, the revolt spread and got deep rooted. Uh, the reasons we have already cited, for example, Nana Sahib in Kanpur was not allowed pension. There was a mutiny that started from the Barakpur and that was the reason again in Delhi it was Abdu, uh, Bahadur Shah Zafar. The Zafar was, uh, Bahadur Shah Zafar was not given the title and finally Bahadur Shah Zafar was exiled to Rangoon. So he was sent as an, in exile to Rangoon or what is presently known as Yangoon. Uh, so those were some of the things that happened and finally it was the end of the 
एम्पायर ऑफ मुगल रूल इन इंडिया एंड द एस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ ब्रिटिश एज अ पैरामाउंट पावर इन इंडिया सो वी वुड अंडरस्टैंड द रिजल्ट ऑफ द रिवोल्ट सेपरेटली बट दैट वॉज वन ऑफ द मेन थिंग्स एंड द गवर्नर जनरल सो फार हु वर कॉल्ड एज वर नाउ कॉल्ड एज वाइस रॉयज सो द टाइटल्स वर चेंज हियर एंड ऑल दोज हु रिबेल्ट वर हैंग टू डेथ सो देर वॉज अ ह्यूज वाइड स्प्रेड ब्यूटनी दैट हैपन mainly in the north but this revolt was actually not successful definitely not because india did not became independent after the revolt of 1857 so what were the reason, real reasons for the failure of this re- revolt is important to understand and these reasons for the failure would help us understand how to bring people together so that the same mistakes are not repeated again when there was another movement for independence that was to be fought so what were the causes of actual failures the first important cause were the people were not united so there was no unity among the people some of the zamindars were loyal to the britishers some of the zamindars were not but again there was a segment of zamindar who was highly loyal to the britishers and since they were loyal to the britishers they were not part of the revolt the third important thing was the british army was well equipped they were well equipped not only well equipped they were well expertised they had an expert they were expert in their field they were highly competent and they were also experienced in contrast to the indian soldiers so the british army was much more equipped much more expert much more competent and much more experienced uh, the fourth important thing was this revolt did not involved masses so the huge movement was within the segments only the kings the people of the military were fighting the common man did not came forward so masses were not involved that was again a mistake because so far we were not against the british goods the british goods were flowing in and being accepted by the people so masses by and large was not involved we would see how this revolt developed later and the masses the common people started to come against the british policies or the british rules again important thing was it was all of the sudden that this revolt grew with the event of mangal pande so this was not planned and as a result sorry this was not organized as well so this was not planned and not organized the next important thing was with the help of the transport networks and the communication networks that were laid down britishers could communicate very well and strategically and this was one of the reasons that they could communicate quickly from one region to another which was a failure attempt from the side of india the the people of india could not do that at the same pace and as a result the the common people had to suffer in india uh, the next important thing was the zamindars were loyal but there was also another segment which became loyal and those were the people who were trained to be indians in blood and color but britishers in talent and intellect that means a segment of educated people who attained western education so segment of educated middle class who attained western education considered themselves to be more westernized and as a result they supported the british policy and that was another reason for the failure of the revolt now what came as the result of the revolt as the result of the revolt as we said the east india company officially ended so it was no more the east india company end of east india company happened and with the end of east india company under the queen's rule the british proclamation was laid down and india came under the direct rule of the parliament 
and there was a queen rule which was established in india now once the queen rule was established in india under the proclamation laid down by the queen's rule it was said that the welfare of the people would be looked after by the queen the next important thing was the paramountcy which would be established would say that they have moved from the post of governor general to viceroys so after 1857 there were no more governor generals it came all those became the viceroys in india so there was a change in the hierarchy doctrine of lapse which was brought by lord dalhousie was abolished so doctrine of lapse was no more into action the policy of divide and rule got deeper and that was the real reason for their success and establishment of their supremacy and power the artillery went under british soldiers so only those who were british soldiers were allowed to maintain the artillery so artillery went under british power another important thing or the uh, idea which was laid down was there was non interference in the social and the cultural life so far they interfered with the social and the cultural life but at this point they said that they would no more interfere with the uh, social uh, and the cultural uh, settings of the country and they also said that there would be no new kingdoms which would be annexed so no new annexation policy would be there because they had their only rule which was established in the country they believed that there is no further need for the uh, future annexations or future kingdoms or states to be brought into india the parliament would also advise the indian council for matters which pertain to the internal affairs and uh the secretary of state of india would be appointed so those were uh, some of the developments which came as the result of the revolt however if we broadly understand this 1857 revolt we need to understand that the most important reasons for the failure was firstly division of the country on religious ground the second was division of the country on the grounds of education a segment of the educated middle class supported the britishers a segment of the zamindars who were made zamindars on the basis of hierarchy and that was considered as uh, on the basis of hereditary and that was considered as transferable again supported the britishers so there were various segmentations and divisions within the society which was created and this policy of divide and rule does not apply to one concept let's say religion or caste or creed but it was made across various segments in the society between the educated and the uneducated between different religions between the different communities and as a result the strength of the nation weakened this led to establishment of a stronger hold of the company the company which came as a trading company and later was trying to have its political influence through uh, annexing the empires or capturing more empires was no more interested into annexation but was only interested into one single rule and that was the rule under the queen's proclamation and establishment of the parliament in india so this were the developments that uh, actually fueled the revolt of 1857 as we had seen and why this revolt failed and what were the takeaways from the revolt in the next section we would understand how the real freedom movement started post 1857 revolt which was also known as the spoil mutiny or the first war of independence